Welcome to MSU Magazine, where we bring you original segments produced by talented Convergent Media students right here from Moorhead State University. On this week's episode, we start with Women in Action that focuses on women athletes. After that, we'll tune into Ash Culp and Maya McIntosh on genres with Gen Zs, while they'll discuss Studio Ghibli's hit classic, Princess Mononoke. Let's race into Women in Action with my kitchen. Hi, my name is Mayumi, and welcome to Women in Action. Today we have Gloria Clark. Nice of you to join us today. <laughs> so, where are you from? I am from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky? Yeah. You're not that far from here, are you? No, nah, I'm like three hours. Three hours? Better than me, 15 hours away Ooh. from Florida. Why did you choose MSU? Um, I actually chose MSU because I had a college career for my high school and there was a black lady representing MSU and she had told me like all about MSU when I um, walked up to her table and she had told me about this diversity scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I had went and applied for it as I was applying for other colleges. But then when I had received a phone call that I had gotten this full ride scholarship, I just thought like, okay, like I'm for real going to Moorhead because I just didn't think to pass that up, that type of opportunity up. Okay. So, former athlete, track star. Yes. Okay. So, what was it like growing up and being a girl playing sports? To me personally, being a girl growing up playing sports, there wasn't really anything bad on my part. I think it's because of the opportunities I had where I was able to play with, with other black children on the track team. And I think I think when my mom put me into a black like little like little black leads for track, that's where I just normally felt inclusive. I will say though, um, when it came to like the sponsorships, it was different. We didn't really get as much compared to other leagues that were more so with white athletes and stuff, but yeah. So what challenges do you think women athletes face? I feel like professionally when it comes to athletes, they get affected with money. Like with women athletes, they get paid less and the respect is very less than because of because of like what's the word because of pre-existing notions that have been that have been put into place here in america with like the man being better than a woman things like that um i also feel in terms of sponsorships when it comes to commercials i feel like men tend to get, tend to be sponsored more with commercials, like tend to be promoted more with commercials, more than women. Like you'll see literally LeBron James with a Sprite commercial, but then the only time I see Serena Williams is like in a magazine. And I feel like magazine, like not everyone reads a magazine the way you would see a commercial every yeah. day. I think one of the issues that women athletes face stereotypes and it shows and because of that women athletes do not get any type of credit or anything like that. So how do you think people can drive towards women's sports? How do you think I can drive women towards sports or like, drive people to it? Yeah, like what do you think can help people drive towards women's sports? I think if we have better outlets Mm -hmm. I think if women were promoted more through Instagram, because I feel like even if someone isn't on Instagram 24-7, I feel like the majority of people are, they do have that app. Yeah. Rather than an app like Snapchat, because I know they put like a lot of ads on there. I also feel like we can be better promoted through having those commercials that I feel is male dominated. And by having more maybe like clothing deals. I see a lot of influencers have um, clothing deals, but I think women athletes can have clothing deals as well because I feel like fashion is a big part of women's, you know, their lives and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. 
us women athletes will succeed and thrive in any sport we play and love because we believe in ourselves even when no one else does. We are the voice of the present, past, and future because change will occur. And when it does, we will be the reason for it. Thank you and see you next time on Women in Action. It's time to take your game to the next level at the MSU Esports Lounge. With top-of-the-line equipment, you'll be changing the game. Featured in the eSports Lounge are 10 gaming stations, a PS5 and Xbox Series X, and two Nintendo Switch consoles for loads of fun. You can also get your live stream on in the streaming room. There's something for everyone here at the eSports Lounge. Come join the fun in ADUC Room 252. Well, another great segment from my kitchen, Glorious Clark showcase the world of African-American athletes and the long race female athletes have been running to get important visibility and marketing. We're glad Women in Action helps raise awareness about all the hurdles women athletes have to scale with the mass media to get recognized and promoted in media other than magazines. Next up, Ash Culp and Maya McIntosh illustrate the breathtaking world of Studio Ghibli's classic, Princess Mononoke, on genres with Gen Z's. Return the head of the forest spirit. Save the forest. Save us all. <laughs> Our story begins in a small village known as Amishi, where it is attacked by a demon. The village prince swiftly kills the demon, but is left with the curse certain to kill him. He is banished from his home and must see the world with eyes unclouded by hatred in order to find a cure. As a result, he finds himself as the mediator between man and nature. So if you haven't guessed, the movie that we're talking about today is my all-time favorite Studio Ghibli film, Princess Mononoke, which I was very sad Maya had never seen, <laughs> but we had a lot of fun with it. Um, I would say the best place to start is how it's a good representation of the genre. The specific genre we've cho chosen, I wouldn't say is a genre. It's kind of just, as a whole, it's animation. So specifically, I'd say it's a good representation of this. Of course, it's animated. Uh, but with animation, you can show kind of a, a mystique to a world and deliver the message that you want, but you can't really do that kind of message uh, specifically so worldly and made of color and spirits that would require so many actors, so much CG even today, they would not have been able to accomplish this back in 1997 when it came out. Basically... With animation, the goal is to make something that you can make that you, you can't necessarily do in live action, so you show in a beautiful art style how you can tell that story. And it really adds to it because in the movie, I mean, we see the fight between man and nature, and I feel like with that animation, it works perfectly to show even accounts of today what we deal with with climate change and with deforestation and stuff like that. I mean, like the movie shows, there is a battle between man and nature, and that's what we are kind of, like I said, kind of going through today. We're trying to fight nature in a sense that we want more land for us to live on, but at the same time, nature is fighting back with... It wants just as much space. It's, yeah. It wants to live, too. And I'd say that also goes well into how the message kind of tackles both sides of the argument. It both tackles the industry side of humanity wanting to expand because we're getting bigger, we're getting more intelligent, you know, we're progressing as a society. And that's not always necessarily a bad thing, especially because Princess Mononoke, a lot of the characters that they focus on in the main town of Iron Town are people who weren't able to work anywhere else. They were lepers, they were girls that worked in brothels that people kind of just looked down upon. They were men who weren't as strong as their brothers or their fathers or their uncles. And it's, it's a cluster of people that were kind of downtrodden on society, taken in by Lady Eboshi, the main, uh, the main, I guess, antagonist is a good word for her. I don't know necessarily though, because if you think about it, either side, you look, Yes, there's bad things about him, like we see Lady Inoshi take this uh, forest spirit's head, but at the same time she has reasons behind it, and it's exactly like the forest gods, they hate humans, but at the same time you watch them get their homes taken away, so you almost can't hate either side. 
And then, of course, like mentioned, there is the side of nature, and in this instance, it's the people of Irontown encroaching on the nature of the forest, and the forest spirits and the gods reacting very poorly, as, as you would if, you know, somebody came into your home, started kicking all your stuff over, and said, hey, we're gonna, like, take all of your resources so you can't live anymore, which leads to them eventually trying to take the forest god's head, and that doesn't turn out too well. I'd say next, something, like, really good to talk about in that aspect is they don't shy away from showing all of the negativity that comes with that. Like, even though this is a children's film, this is one of the most mature children's films I have seen in a while. Oh yeah. It's very bloody and it's not afraid to show the actualities of war and battle, not just between man and nature, but man and man as the samurai. They're kind of, they're not even necessarily like the king samurai. They kind of attack the people and whatnot. Yeah, and fun fact actually with Studio Ghibli, another reason to absolutely adore them, they did not allow America to have their hands on this because America wanted to censor it for their children. And the studio was like, uh, no, that will destroy half of the message. So they refused to give it to America unless they released the full version. And I feel like if America had gotten it, it would have tried to change the culture of a lot of the film. And 100%. And that's, again, another beautiful thing with Studio Ghibli. They're not afraid to, like, cross standards and stuff like that. So, I mean, in the film we see uh, stuff that kind of resembles Japanese culture and stuff like that. And they're not afraid to not Americanize it or not let other cultures have an influence on what they want to show. Even if it would have gotten them more money trying to Americanize it more, they stuck, stuck to their guns and stayed with their culture. Exactly. So we see a lot of women empowerment, a lot of ladies in power, and kind of like the men uh, getting the food for the women and then the women doing the heavy labor. Lady Eboshi literally like has so much faith in these women thinking they can hold down the town and they do for a while and defend it against the samurai. Exactly. But if you're looking for a movie that is as gung-ho about nature as the Lorax and that is like a really strong woman empowerment film, I'd suggest any Studio Ghibli film, but I especially suggest Princess Mononoke. It's a good one. <laughs> but uh, thank you. This has been Genres of Gen Z's. I'm Ash. I'm Maya. We'll see you next time. <laughs>